She's fresh off the plane from representing New Zealand at the Miss Universe pageant in Las Vegas. Please welcome to Good Morning, Rhea Van Dyke. Rhea, thank you so much for coming thank and chatting with us today. Thank you for having me. And congratulations on uh, going away to such an amazing event. How was it in Las Vegas for it you? It was incredible. It was really like a world of its own over in Las Vegas. Was it what you expected? Had, had people, had you talked to people, had it, had it prepared you for that when you actually stepped off the plane and were part of this amazing pageant? I had an incredible support crew. Uh, my mum and Susan Rogers Allen, who actually trained Lorraine Downs, and my number one photographer, Neil Gussie, they were behind me the whole way and supported me and, and helped me really grasp the whole concept of going over to Miss Universe. Vegas is a pretty full-on place at the, at the best of times, but mm. heading over there for, for a beauty pageant. What were the girls like? Did you, did you make friends with a lot of the girls or was it quite catty and quite, everyone was quite focused to win it? Well, to be honest with you, I thought it would be cattier than it actually was. Um, I made friends with quite a lot of the girls, including Miss Mexico, who won, won the it, crown. Yeah. And um, I think when you get 83 girls together in, in one competition, there's going to be, you know, a few girls who are harder to get on with than others. But overall, they were really nice. You know, talk, talking to the other girls, did, did, they, did they feel pressure from their countries to, mm. to try and win this event? And did you feel um, pressure from New Zealand to try and win this event? I think that the girls really did feel a lot of pressure, especially countries like USA and mm. Venezuela, and I think it was hard for them when they didn't make the top 15. But I think I felt the whole way through that I had support behind me, and yeah. no matter what happened, my country knew that I was doing the best that I could. Yeah. I, wanna, I want to um, uh, talk about, uh, I guess, beauty pageants maybe from 20 or 30 years ago compared to now, and, and I guess leading on to the pressure that some of these um, these girls felt a mm. lot of uh, work being done, you know, in terms mm. of their face. It, were a lot of the girls had a lot had a lot of the girls had a lot of work done? Yes, they had. Yes, they had. I know you haven't because we've chatted before about <laughs> it. But did you did you feel pressure to to maybe get work done before you entered in pageants? Before going into Miss Universe, I knew that the girls would have had work done, mm. and of course you feel pressure as a young woman. You feel you know you need to look a certain way, but. I'm, I'm really not keen on, on doing anything like that and I'm happy with the way that I am. So I worked with a personal trainer to right. get my body fit right. and a nutritionalist as well. Rhea, for, for, for you, why, why did you decide to enter beauty pageants at the start? How did it all come about? Uh, well, this is a funny one actually. Uh, late last year, it was the Miss Auckland pageant. That was my first ever pageant. Right. And I was sitting at university one day, doing my thing, doing my studying, and uh, procrastinating a little bit. And I saw an advert for the Miss Auckland competition. I thought, why not? Why not give it a go and, and see where it leads me? And, and it led me to the Miss New Zealand pageant. Because yeah, you didn't actually, you didn't win the, the Miss Auckland, did you? No, I didn't. So how did it come about that you represented New Zealand at the Miss uh, Universe New Zealand? How did, that, how did it all happen? The national director for Miss New Zealand spotted me in Miss Auckland and she thought that I would have a great chance in the Miss New Zealand and, and pushed me forward for that and found me um, at Conoheat as the sponsor. Right. Yeah. So how has this opened up your life? How has this changed your life? It's really been a whole new world for me, uh, coming from being a university student. And, I mean, if you told me this time last year I would be Miss New Zealand, I wouldn't have believed you. It's been really incredible and it's, it's fun. Yeah, because um, well, I want to talk about your study. You've, uh, you've been studying for your master's. Actually, you put your master's on, on hold. Yes. But that's been your sole focus. Mm. You were based in Christchurch, moved to Auckland. Mm -hmm. Is... Are you going to go back and study? What, what's, what's, what's happening in the next 12, 6 to 12 months for you? I'm looking forward to any doors that may open through this and the opportunities that may arise. Uh, I've, exciting news yesterday, I actually have joined with an agency. Really? Uh, acting and modelling agency, so we'll see what happens there. And um, I'll always, you know, I'll always go back to my, my passion and my study and, and that will always be there. But I'm looking forward to the year ahead. What does uh, what does uh, mum uh, think about this and your your brothers and sisters? Oh, they are so supportive. They're my number one crew. <laughs> now you you were you were brought up in uh, Kawaro mm -hmm. and then moved to Christchurch at a young age, but but travelled around the world a lot as a as a, a young child. Mm. Did did you enjoy that time travelling around the world and has it sort of made you who you are today? Oh yeah, definitely. I think it has shaped me to be who I am today and I think it developed in me a sense of awareness for different cultures and uh, different beliefs and, and it really gave me an appreciation for how big the world really is. It's, it, I, I was reading uh, in the uh, background notes your, your dad left you at a young age, but mm -hmm. your mum um, took on, I don't know whether you call her your foster sister or she's actually your sister, but your mother took on a, um, a, a child 
at uh, when you were at the age of seven. Share with, uh, share with us that story because it's your younger sister Abigail, yes. isn't it? My little sister Abigail is so beautiful and I love her so much. Uh, my mum had a business language school mm. in Christchurch at the time and one of the students that used to study from there uh, conceived and um, it was out of wedlock and she was afraid to tell her family because um, she would have brought uh, shame on her family, family yeah. and um, she was very scared and very frightened and she was good friends with my mum. She approached my mum one day and she said you're the only person that I can see that would that would give love to my baby. Would you, would you do it? Will you take on wow. my baby? Um, otherwise her baby was going to go into a orphanage in Thailand and because I've been to orphanages in Thailand before with my family and, and seen the desperation there um, my mum prayed a lot and she really couldn't see any other way she she wanted to give that's, love to new life that's pretty amazing mm. that's, that says a lot about your mum how much does yeah. your mum mean to you oh everything the really? world yes yeah and she's she incredible. supports you in, in everything that you're doing she right does now. She does. She's absolutely fantastic. So Ria, um, the next 12 months, whatever doors open, you're just gonna you're just gonna go with it and sort of sort of take every opportunity. Oh, definitely. I'd love to take every opportunity, and I'm excited to see what's gonna come. Ria, it's fantastic for you to be on the show today. Thank you so much for joining us, and good luck with the future. Thank you very much. Wonderful.